Hello, and welcome to another Grams tutorial. In this episode, we will learn how to create a new family tree database and begin adding people and relationships to our tree. First, we'll look at how to create a new database to store our tree. Next, we'll explore how to add individual people to populate our tree. And lastly, I'll walk you through how to add relationships between parents, spouses, and children. So let's begin. All right, so I have Gramps up and running. And the very first window that you should see, if this is the first time that you have ever opened Gramps um, and you haven't created a tree yet, is this family tree uh, dialog box here. Um, and your list will be empty, obviously, because you have not created any trees yet. Um, if this box does not show up, it's probably because you might have created a tree in the past and Gramps automatically opened that tree when it was uh, opened up. So um, if that window gets closed and you need to bring it back, right over here on the top left, there's a button that kind of looks like a pedigree chart. It says Manage Databases. If we click that, it will bring that window back up. We can also go to uh, Family Trees, Manage Family Trees, or we can just key in Control-O. All three will bring this window back up. Okay, so as you can see, I have a few trees already. I've been working with Gramps for a little while now. Um, in order to create our very first tree, though, all we need to do is click over here on the right side. It says New, and that's going to add a tree here to our list. So. Family tree name, it currently is called family tree one. That's quite unoriginal. Um, so you can go ahead and key in whatever you want. Uh, the text is selected, so you can just start typing it or replace whatever you um, start typing with. So I'm gonna do the Wallace of family tree for this example. Okay, hit enter and it will save. All right, and that's all there is to creating your tree. Um, we now have this tree. Uh, database and we can open it and start adding people. Um, before we do that though, I want to go over some of these options here. So um, the info button here, this is just going to tell us some information about like what's included in your tree, the version, um, where it's stored on your computer, all that kind of stuff. Uh, delete obviously will delete the tree. Uh, be careful if you delete it. So if you click delete, it will give you a warning, um, but it will permanently do uh, delete your data if you do click remove family trees, so just be careful. <clears throat> Don't delete the wrong thing. Um, if you typed in the wrong name here, or you want to rename it in the future, just make sure it's selected, click rename, and you can start typing again. And then hit enter and it'll save. Um, if your database is currently open, there will be a little folder icon right here. And then you would be able to click on close and that'll just close the open database. Um, convert, if this is uh, a new uh, grams for you, you've got the latest edition, you probably won't have to use convert. Um, if you, you can see right here, I have a different database type for this tree right here. And this is because I brought this in from an older version of Gramps. Gramps has moved to uh, SQLite and so this is uh, an updated database type. So what I actually did is I clicked on this one, I clicked convert, and it'll actually create a new database here with the new database type for me. Um, so you might want to do that with some of your older databases if you have any, just so that you're current and running the, the latest database type with Gramps. Uh, and hopefully you never have to use this button. Um, if your database becomes corrupted or it can't open anything like that, you might be able to repair it. Uh, so go ahead and give that a try. Hopefully it'll fix your uh, problems. Um, <clears throat> if not, it would be a good idea at least somewhat frequently to create a backup just in case anything happens. Um, and, and I explained how to do a backup in one of my previous videos. Go ahead and, and check those out and you can find steps to do that if you need them. All right, but for this example here, so we've created this tree, let's go ahead and load it. So select the tree, click load family tree. And it may not look like anything happened, okay? But if you look up here in the top left, the title bar has changed. It's now got Wallace of family tree. So we know that we're now open to the family tree 
um, that we just created. Uh, if you're not sure, okay, you can always go back to this window here, Family Trees. You can see here's now the, um, the folder icon. So it's showing that this is currently the open and active database that we've got. All right, so now we need to start filling out this tree. Right now we've got zero people, as you can see. Um, so the first thing we need to do is click on the People tab over on the left, and it will open up the uh, People section here in the main content area. Yours may look a little bit different than mine. Um, you can customize your view uh, many different ways. If you just click up here on View, you can add or remove any of these toolbars just by clicking the, the check mark. You can configure it. Um, you can also uh, select whether you want all the people to be listed or you want them to be grouped by surname. Currently, I'll group them by people, um, or, or I guess just list them as people, not, not grouped at all, because um, we don't have any people here, and we're only going to have a few, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to group them right now. Um, okay, so adding a person, how do we do that? There's multiple ways to do this. You find whichever way is most intuitive to you. Some people will prefer some ways over others. Um, so I'll give you all the ways that you can do it, and then I'll do the way that I normally do it. So you can go up here to Add, and click on Person. That'll bring up our Add Person box. We can right-click here in the the white area on the top and say add that'll add a person as well or we can also and this is my favorite I can just click on this little button here the plus sign if you hover over it it says add a new person and it's gonna bring up this box right here this person box and everything here is empty as you can see so this is creating a new person for us and this is one of two uh, creation boxes that we're really going to be interested in. The other one is to create a family. Um, but this is the first one we're going to create a person. So first of all we're going to give this person a name. Uh, the, um, the cursor is automatically set in this given uh, name box so you can actually just start typing as soon as this box, come, box shows up. Um, so we're going to add Adam, his last name, Wallace. Okay. And that's really all we need to do. Um, now, if we don't choose the gender and we say, OK, Gramps will yell at us and say we need to choose one. Most of the time, it's just because we forgot to choose it and not because we don't know. Um, so I'll go ahead and say, OK. You can see here it's yelling at me, unknown gender specified. So I'm going to go ahead and say male. All right, so we've got Adam. So this is our first person in our database. Now, Adam is kind of lonely. Um, he needs he needs some family here, so let's go ahead and add a spouse for Adam. Um, one way we can do this is just by adding another person. So let's go ahead and add his wife. Her name is Henrietta. Last name is Kiefer. Okay. Again, we can select the gender here, so it won't yell at us. Say okay. All right. So we've got two people now in our our family tree, but these are two separate people. There's no connection yet between the two. We need to um, create the relationship. Okay, so um, we could do that in the relationship tab, although I really don't like using it. It's a little bit confusing. Um, but if you want to use it, first you need to select a person. So we want to select Adam. Then if you select relationships, we kind of get this empty box here. Um, so if you want to add parents, you can do it through here. There's also um, buttons here that you would use. So this would create a new family with Adam as the parent. This will add uh, Adam as a child to an existing family. And this will add a new set of parents. Um, I would actually prefer to use the families box. It just it makes a little more sense to me. I kind of get in trouble a little bit with the relationships. I, tend to be adding people to the wrong places that way. Um, this seems to make a little more sense to me. If, if the relationship uh, tab makes more sense to you, feel free to use it. Um, so the second box that we're going to be interested in, so I said the first one was the people, the second is the families, and you do this the exact same way as you did a person. So to create a relationship between two people, we'll go to families, and then we're going to add a new family. So we can either go to add, and family, we can right click, 
go to add or we can simply click the plus button up here in the, the menu bar here so that's going to give us a new dialog box now you notice this one looks a little bit different than the create a person box okay so um, if you've already created the people that need to go into the family we can just go ahead and select them we're going to use this button right here that says select a person as the father and here we'll select a person as the mother so we've already got Adam and his wife created so you'll just have to click on the little uh, triangle here to drop down the um, the people under the surname they're grouped by surnames okay so there's Adam if we had birth and death information in there for him it would show up there we can go ahead and select Henrietta okay so now we've created a new family we've got to say okay to commit our changes and there we go we've got a new family unit okay now as you can see I didn't fill out anything else so we're gonna to want to go back and, and change some things here um, let's go ahead and also add a child while we're at it <clears throat> so let's say Adam and Henrietta has a child we can double click um that row let me go back and show you one more time so if we want to edit them there's there's a couple ways we can do it we can select them click on this pencil icon we can right click them go to edit you can key in control and return my favorite way is just to double click it'll bring this window back up if we've made a mistake we can easily change it here um, so from this window we can actually do a lot um, so they've already been added, so we can remove somebody. Um, this minus here is just going to remove this person from this family unit. It's not going to delete them from your tree. However, if you're on the people tab, so let's go over there for a second, and I were to select Henrietta, and I click the minus here now instead, this is actually going to remove the person from our database. Okay, so if you click here, it's going to give us a warning. Are you sure you want to delete? The data can only be recovered by the undo option or by quitting with abandoning changes. So if I delete her, all right, she's gone. And suppose I did not mean to delete her. It was an accident. I can go here to edit and undo delete person. All right, it'll save a few of your recent uh, actions. So you can undo so many. I'm not sure how many it actually um, saves. You can also look at the undo history if you want to see. Um, so here's all the actions you did. You can go and select however many you want to undo. And you could click undo there. Or you can clear if, if you really don't want to undo anything and um, you just want to get rid of it. All right, but I do want to undo this. So I'm actually going to do it from here. It makes a little more sense. So undo delete person. All right, there she's back now. Okay. All right, so if we go again into families, we said we were going to, uh, let's change the relationship type and also add a child. So double click. All right, we can select right here, type. We can select married. Um, if you don't like these four choices and you wanna use something different, you can actually type in your own. Just click here, select this text, and go in and key in whatever you, you wanna type here, okay? But I'm going to actually go ahead and just use married. Um, whatever you type will be saved. And then it'll also show up in future uh, family creations. So, so you won't have to key it in every time. Once, once you type it once, it'll be in that list for good. All right, so we've got married. And we want to add a child. How do we do that? So we could go to people again, create the child. And then we can just add them here. Um, it's a little faster. We can actually just click this plus button right here. So if we click here, it's going to create a new person and add the child to the family. So kind of multiple steps in one. It will save us a little bit of time. Um, so you can also see that it's added the last name already. Since we've got um, Adam Wallace here, it's automatically going to assume that that is the child's name. If it's not, you can just select it and change it. Um, but in this case, it is. So we're going to add Sarah. All right, so this is their child. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. 
and I get a uh, child reference editor box show up here. It's just asking what's the relationship between the child and the father and the child and the mother. All right, so in this case, it's both they're both birth. All right, so I'm just going to have say, okay, you could change this again. You can either choose one of these or you can type your own, whatever you need to do. Okay, and there, there it's listed right here. So paternal and maternal, both birth. Um, if we had a birth date and stuff like that, this would also show up. We will go into that in a future video. This is, this is more just adding people. All right, so once we have this child, we can continue to add children. If they've got more children, we can click Add, and we can keep going as, as many children as they have. Um, and again, if you've already created the person, you want to add them to a set of parents, you can just use this uh, existing add existing person as a child. Um, if you want to edit this child, you can either double-click her, or you can click on this little pencil here. Oops, let's see. Ah, okay. So you can't edit the child this way. <laughs> you can only edit the relationship between the child and the parent, child and the mother. If you want to edit the child itself, you'll have to um, right-click. And then you can edit child here versus edit relationship. Edit child, and, and there we get that box there. All right, if we ever want to remove the child, say we added the wrong person, um, we can click this minus here. This is only removing the child from the family, though. It's not removing the child from your database. So if I do that, I can remove. All right, she's already created. Say I want to add her again. I can use this one now, the little hand icon, and I can find her here and add her back. Again, it's going to ask me again what's the relationship. Got it? Okay. All right, we click OK. Good. Now you will see when you select the family in the family tab, down here it's going to start listing the children. Okay, so it's kind of helpful. We can see more relationships are being created here in this way. All right, so say I want to add parents now. So we added a child, we added a marriage uh, family unit. How would we add parents? So I've got Adam here. I want to add his mom and dad. All right, so um we can we can do this in two different ways we could create his parents first turn them into a family unit and then add adam as a child um, but we can actually skip many of those steps just by going to family straight away okay and we can actually create a new family and we can just go ahead and create a new person here. So Nicholas, his last name is going to be Wallace. Okay. And we'll say all right. And add the mother, uh, Katerina uh, Mauer. Say okay. And they are married. And their child is Adam. And again, it's going to ask how he's related to them. Okay. So we've just created two family units now. The one we created uh, as spouses and add a child. Here uh, in Nicholas and Katerina's case, we had a child. We wanted to add parents. Yeah, we both kind of did it the same way. It's always through the family, uh, create a family dialogue here. So we'll always do the uh, plus here on the family. If they're already created, again, you can use this button. Otherwise, you can create a person. And then children, if the children are already existing, you can find them in your tree already. Otherwise, you can click the plus and you can create the new children here. All right, now if you want to ever delete any of the families or the people, simply click on the tab that you're interested in. Um, let's say that this family actually I discovered is not, is not real. Um, I was researching the wrong place. Um, this is actually a different family. Adam is not their child. Um, in order to delete that, 
I can simply select it and click on the minus button here. And it says deleting the item will remove it from the database. Again, you can only uh, bring it back by using the undo or quit with abandoning changes. All right, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna delete them. And what you will see, okay, so the family disappeared. However, they're still going to be listed in my family tree under the people. Okay, I have not deleted the people yet. I've only deleted the family relationship. So if I do actually want to delete uh, Nicholas, and Katerina. I'll have to select them. Um, if you want to select multiple people at one time, hold down control and then select the next person. You can continue to select. So for example, I've clicked here on Katerina. I hold down control. I can click on Nicholas then. And I've selected both of them. Might save you a little bit of time. And then I can remove them. And it says delete Katerina. I can say yes, and then delete Nicholas, and I can say yes, and they've both been deleted, okay? Um, now, I didn't want to do that. That really is his parents, so I can also edit undo, edit undo, undo, and that should bring them all right back up there. And there they are. So, so we've learned how to create a person. We've learned how to make a family unit. We've learned how to add children, and we've learned how to add parents. So if you have found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, please comment in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. And we hope that this video helps you to use Gramps and helps you with organizing your, your research. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in again for another tutorial.